Welcome everybody to a new video and long time no see, or as they say in Japanese, hisashiburi. It's been a while because we've been somewhat indisposed as we have been moving to a new and improved JCH HQ. Hope you like it. So one of the advantages of having a new space is that we have space, which is brilliant. So we can actually focus on doing some of the things we really wanted to do, but didn't have the space in the previous office. And one of those things is self-developing, which is great. So we, uh, instead of being asked to elbow, we actually have the space to do some self-developing. So what we thought we'd do, we're going to go to Kichijoji, which is where we had the last office, and we were based there for five years, and we've got some great memories. We're going to go back, bid adieu to Kichijoji, get some shots, um, hopefully some good shots, come back, dev the roll, see how it goes, and see if we get anything good. And we're going to be using uh, the Cine Still CS41 powder kit and the Ars Imago lab box to do the self-developing. I hope we get some good results. Wish us luck and let's go. So thanks to the, uh, the Rona, the park has been closed off kind of in Okashira Park, so we can't actually get close, but people are still coming out because they love to see the sakura. So this year there's no Hanami parties, nobody's getting drunk under the cherry trees doing their Hanamis up here. We're going to be leaving Kichijoji, but this was kind of my hood and um, I just wanted to show you some of my favorite spots. When I, back when I could eat whatever I wanted, this is the place I would come to get food. This is Harmonica, which is just a mishmash of tiny little shops, restaurants, bars, all sorts of things put together. Um, you've seen it in a lot of videos actually, because it's pretty photogenic. So let's take a stroll through. Min Min, really, really, really great gyoza. Again, something I can't eat anymore. Let you into a little secret, they've got gluten in. I can't eat gluten. Yeah, but if you do come here, hit the Min Min. You won't be sorry. This is the Shotengai, the main uh, shopping street, I guess. It's called Kitchi Georgi Sun Road. They've always got such a delightful name. Um, and this is Sun Road, and this is sort of semi, I guess it's covered, but the water kind of leaks in. It's where everybody goes to shop. You've got your McDonald's and all of your banks and all of your big stuff in there. Lots of chain restaurants, supermarkets, you know, um, COVID clusters, that sort of thing. This is the favorite, my favorite part of the Shotengai, um, the shopping street, because this is where I used to buy stuff when I was allowed to eat stuff. Um, Mr. Donut, the Lind uh, pastry store, German pastry store. Place where I used to go and get a massage. Place where I used to go and get my beard trimmed. This shrine is right slap bang in the middle of the shopping street, which is kind of cool, kind of weird, um, but awesome. And it's nice and peaceful in there as well. So you can just get off the shopping street and find yourself in this tranquil place. Um, which in the summertime has a really good uh, festival as well. This shrine is really cool because the family that owns it has been here for generations and um, they're actually friends of my family. So my kids play with their kids 
and uh, they have Aikido classes here. So my kids go to the Aikido classes here as well. So it's like a real corn, like a real linchpin for the community. That is the Yodabashi for Kichijoji Yodabashi camera. And I got my office initially because it was next door, so it was super convenient. And at the time I was doing a lot of business with Yodabashi. But times change and we're moving. Now Yodabashi is far away. It's less convenient, but I don't really miss it because it's also really, really noisy, so. This is Alibaba. Supposedly a DVD shop, but we know exactly what kind of DVDs they have. Yeah. We're back. The weather held out, it was lovely, and we managed to finish our roll, so I'm gonna whip it out for you. All right. And there we go. The last of the Pro 400H. You can call me Mr. Baller. So we're gonna get that developed, but before we do that, we need to do something very important because health and safety is paramount, so we need to get changed. And we're back, and we're health and safety AF. So, Cine Still has been very kind to send us this kit which we're using today, which is the CS41 powder kit. It's cool that they sent this to us because you can't actually get it in Japan, so big bonus for us. Comes in three sachets, and um, what you've got, you've got the bath, which is number one, and this, mix this up with water, and these are ones we've prepared earlier just for the sake of time. You've got one which makes one litre of the bath and the developer, and then you've got these two which go together, and this is the bleach and fix bath, part uh, A and B. They go together and they make up one litre of this. Now, do yourself a favour, like we've done, right which one is which on the top so you don't get muddled up or forget in the future. Also, um, they are chems, so you know, try and keep them in a cool and dark place when you're not using them because you could find that they degrade. You're meant to be able to get around 24 rolls from these. So let's um, go and pop them into the water heater, the sous vide. Now, we have our warm bath, our sous vide, or whatever you want to call it, turned up to 39 Celsius, which is uh, Fahrenheit. So we're going to pop those in there and let them come up to temperature. Don't think you need to put the sous vide directly into the chemicals. This is far more efficient time-wise. You can just keep the chemical bath on time so you can just have it accessible when you need it. So while we wait for the chems to come up to temperature, let's, uh, let's get this bad boy into the lab box. Right, now we've got the film in the lab box. Next step is optional, but I like to do it. We're gonna do a pre-soak using the water that's at the same temperature as the chemicals, just to get things started a bit. I wonder what that's doing there. This is my uh, personal thermometer. Let's get to it. Okay, we've done our one minute pre-rinse. Next step, we need to put our developer in. That's gonna be for three and a half minutes and what we're gonna do at the start while we're putting it in, there's gonna be 10 seconds of agitation and then we will do four turns of the crank every 30 seconds until the time's up. Okay. 
note that go. And time is up, so we're going to pour it back into our jar or into our container and move on to the next stage, which will be the stop bath. Yeah, careful you don't take this to the hospital as granddad's sample, as they might give you a few confused phone calls. Now we need to do the next stage, so we need number two. We're gonna pour, again, 500 mils into there, agitating for the first 10 seconds, and then every 30 seconds, except this time we're going for eight minutes. So let's go. Do a number two. And our time is up, that's eight minutes. So let's get this poured away. Look at that. Don't put this back in the fridge like this, otherwise mummy might think it's her wine and you could have a trip to the ER. And then we'll put that away. And let's take this to the sink and give it a rinse. Got them out. Looks like we've got something. Fantastic. Okay, we're back. We finished. Um, and we actually got some results. You saw the negs developed, but we actually got some pictures that weren't terribly awful. So we did get a result. And I'm really happy with it, actually. Uh, so I thought I'd run through some of the shots we took while we were out on the day and show you what we got. Um, I'm going to run through them in order so that people can, you know, so you can see a sort of timeline as to how I shot the roll. I think that will really help. And we're going to start off with um, this shot, which I liked. And uh, there's, a, I like the framing of the shot. I like the way the shot looks with the, the swan boats, it's very quintessentially Japanese with the sakura. There are a couple of points that I don't like. Um, down at the bottom here you have the sign which is in the way, it kind of distracts the eye because there's text there. Um, I probably should have shot a bit higher up but um, overall I like the shot itself. It's, uh, it's sakura time, it gives a, a lovely sense of well-being. Um, and then following on, we walked a little bit further down the lake, uh, which is in Inokishira Park in Kichijoji. And I saw these two uh, delightful gentlemen. And to me, this is every Japanese park. Every park in Japan, you will find a group of old men with cameras taking photos of nature. And some of them have massive lenses as well. Yeah, they, they spend quite a bit. Uh, but these two were working together, shooting at the same time, and I thought it was really nice the way they were, you know, in sync, as it were, capturing the beauty of the uh, Sakura. Um, the whole park uh, was actually closed off, as you saw in the video, so people couldn't really uh, celebrate Hanami, which is the traditional sort of drinking party underneath the Sakura, which is quite a big deal for Japanese people. So uh, I particularly liked this shot um, because it sort of showed that uh, longing, that desire to, to have that socialization again, um, which was somewhat missing. Uh, I could have, again, perhaps a bit better framing. I, if I'd taken two steps back, perhaps I would have been able to get their feet in the shot as well, uh, which would have sort of rounded it out a little bit more. But overall, uh, I, I like the placement. I like the framing on it. And again, you can't go wrong with Sakura, right? Uh, then we moved into uh, the, the shrine, 
this was the next one I liked, uh, the shrine which is in the center of Kichijoji. I like this because of the tranquility. I'll never, I'll, as long as I've been in Japan, I've been in Japan, what, 16 years now, I'll never get bored of shooting shrines. People will get bored of looking at my pictures of shrines, but I won't get bored of taking pictures of them. I just enjoy the aesthetic appeal, the, the shapes, the lines, the calmness. There are a couple of points in this picture that I don't love. Uh, perhaps I would have liked it if those bikes weren't there on the right hand side because they are slightly distracting. So um, perhaps if I'd taken, again, this is a case of maybe taken a few steps forward, I would have got them out of the shot. Uh, this is a picture I like and I don't like. Um, I like it because of what it shows and, you know, the, the sort of work ethic, the, the focus, the, you know, taking your time to do something well. And I screwed it up because this totally should have been a portrait shot to get through that window. And it's got these two white bars on the side here, which kind of distract from it. So, and it's missing a part here and it's missing a part here. So I, I was in the haste, you know, the haste of the moment. I perhaps should have uh, taken a breath, recomposed and taken the shot again. But you live, you learn. That's why we take pictures, you know. Um, ah, yes, yes, the, uh, the magazine shop, um, yeah, this one I liked, again, I like the light, the, the very sharp contrasting light here is great, he loses his leg in that, which I think is brilliant, it's almost sort of emerging from the shadows, I, I wish I perhaps waited a little bit longer so that this chap wasn't in the shot I think because he's facing the opposite way and he isn't there isn't much going on with him it sort of distracts from it perhaps if it was just this chap with the mask on striding purposely past the uh, dirty magazine shop it would have been yeah, maybe better but I still like the shot itself it's bright and sharp and it really shows the, the film as well. It shows uh, the, the color cast of the Fujifilm 400H, which is great. Another shot that I liked was in Harmonica, the little alleyways. And this is Min Min Gyoza shop. This is the place where people go to get their yummy gyoza. Uh, I liked it because I did actually spend some time on this one, as opposed to just running up and taking a shot and then running off. I actually waited. I could see the guy wanted to go in. He was hesitating. He wasn't sure. He was perhaps waiting if there was some space. And then the woman in the store called him in. At that point, he entered the store and I managed to get it just exactly when I wanted it. So you've got a bit of his reflection uh, as he enters the store. And I, I think that's really nice. That really works for me. Um, perhaps the text on this lantern does distract, draws your eye to the right a little bit. So maybe I could have cut that off a little bit. Um, I don't do post, uh, post shooting cropping. So if I didn't get it right in camera, I didn't get it right, really. Um, I guess I'm quite harsh on myself in that respect. Then we went off to Isaya. This is the yakitori shop, you know, the chicken on the sticks, which I love. These guys are there all the time. So it's not like I probably couldn't get this shot again if I didn't get it right. But I feel like I got it fairly right. Uh, again, I could have been closer, I think. Perhaps a little bit closer. I like the way the smoke is creating contrast. It does get lost a little bit with the grain on this film. It loses, I think that would work really well in black and white. Um, so I'm tempted to go back there and just take a shot on street pan or something and see how it goes. Little plug there. Um, then we went down to uh, the shopping street um, which runs through Kichijoji. This one I waited for, it was the schoolboys and I wanted to wait for them. I could see them coming all the way down the street and I wanted to wait for them to come through this shaft of light and it was nice that this girl with the umbrella came at the same time. The only thing I can think that maybe I didn't do it quite right was I wasn't close enough definitely wasn't close enough because there's still too much on the sides here um, so it does distract a little bit perhaps I could have uh, you know manned up a little bit and got a little bit closer but I do like the shot itself it shows a, a, a nice Japanese scene um, then we get to I guess my favorite shot 
of the, the roll. Um, this one really worked for me, the girl with the umbrella striding past the store, obscuring her face, the sharp contrasting shadows. The store is called Grandma, Mama, Daughter, which is a nice touch. Again, perhaps I could have been closer. I think that is a, a bit of a thing for me. I am, you know, I'm not particularly extroverted anyway, so I don't want to encroach on people's personal space too much. Um, uh, so yes, I could probably get closer. That's that old adage, isn't it, with photography? You can always get closer, you know. Um, so, but still, overall, I like how the shot worked. I feel it worked really well. And again, this one I think would look, work really well with black and white. I'm tempted to go back to that spot just to see if I can find a similar kind of shot. I'm sure there will be at some point. Um, and then there's this added bonus. There's one shot left and it was the last shot on the roll. And I decided to take a photo of the lovely lady who makes my lunch. She makes an absolutely cracking biryani can't fault it so I decided to get a portrait for her it's not a world breaking you know world beating portrait or anything but I like it and I'm actually going to go and give this to her later on and as a, as a gift to say thank you because she is so nice and she always uh, makes sure I get a delicious meal which doesn't make me sick um, so overall yeah the 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 shots work really well but what's more important to me I think is that the developing worked really well and I was really pleasantly surprised at not only how painless it was, but how easy it was. The lab box is brilliant, the chemicals are brilliant, there, there, some great things about it. There's something that people you know, traditionally associate with home development is the smell. The very powerful smell, the staining of the fingers. There wasn't any overpowering smell with this. The lab box did a great job of you know, keeping hands clean, and so you don't need to worry much. Yes, I did wear gloves, but that's because I'm a sensitive flower with sensitive skin and sensibilities, so I have to take care of myself. But it doesn't sting, it doesn't do your hands in. The Cine Still powder is brilliant, it's very easy to use. It's very, once you've done it, I think you can do it once, and that's it, you've got it, you, you've nailed it, you've got it in your head, you know how it works, off you go. Um, it is trouble free and it's inexpensive. It also, and what I found was really interesting and really good was, it doesn't um, only work well on cine still. It works well on all color films. It has, it, it, it brings out the points of, of the color films, you know, the differences. Uh, Fuji traditionally has this 400H has a sort of a, a bit of a green cast to it and it you can see that in these shots it, It's accentuated the characteristics of the film. So this is a very good all-purpose color developing powder kit And I, I highly recommend it It also saves you a bunch of money because it makes sure that your developing is much cheaper And you know what's not to like about that more money for more film so yeah, the lab, lab box itself, easy to use. Again, use it one, two times, bang, you've got it. That's it, done. You'll never have to think about it again. You can do this with your eyes closed. In fact, you can probably teach your kids to do this as long as you make sure they don't drink the bloody stuff. Um, yeah, really good set, really good time doing it. Really enjoyed making this video. Um, and I would say, if you get the chance, go and grab yourself some Cine Still, go and grab yourself Lab Box and have fun developing color at home. Not just black and white, you can develop color at home. Does this uh, replace the traditional tank and reel? Um, no, I don't think it does. This Lab Box is very convenient, it's very easy. It can only do one roll at a time which is a big deal for people who shoot a lot because they want to develop three, four, however many rolls at a time. So there are limitations to this, but if you want to do something quick and easy, or you want to teach somebody the joy, the absolute joy of home development, this is a brilliant way to get started. And then you can move on to more complicated techniques with tanks and reels and things like that later on. But as an introduction into any form of home development, I think this is an absolute game changer, it's brilliant. It's a gateway tank. It's a gateway tank. <laughs> Thanks for watching. 
make sure you come, like, subscribe, press the buttons, ding, uh, come and see the website japancamerahunter.com, Instagram, Japan Camera Hunter, Twitter, all of that sort of stuff. And thanks for watching. Come and watch the next video next time. Bye bye. These are gateway powders. You've got to watch out for them. Once you start, you cannot stop.